Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to viewers and others. Yo, what's going on? I am Scoot Bronson. And I am S. Foster. And that's right. And you tuned into another episode of the Viewers Anonymous Pod, where we give you our very own reviews and takes of movies and TV straight out of Hollywood. What's up with you, bro? And call it, man. Just uh, had one of those rough days at work today, but you know what I'm saying. But I'm still over here to uh, put in this content, man. How you feeling? I'm cool, man. Just uh, you know what I'm saying, and enjoying the day. Uh, went to my son's soccer game, excited. My man got a goal today, so, you know what I'm uh, saying? We, we holding the hog today, man. You know what I'm saying? We living life today. That's what's up, man. For sure, for sure, man. So, um, uh, shall we get into what we watching? Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it. What we, what we watching? So what you got for us, bro? All right, man. Surprise, surprise, man. I got a, uh, I got a rom com for you, and uh, I seen it on uh, Amazon Prime. Um, it's a show, not a show. Excuse me. It's a movie called The Idea of You. And basically, it was a forty-year-old woman who ended up going to a concert with her daughter, uh, her daughter's favorite band, and then she ended up running into the lead singer who was 24 years old, and they formed this on and off relationship when he took her out on tour with her, and it got crazy. But it was a <laughs> it was a it was the eye right little movie, man. Uh, I see I see what they tried to do there. Um, I appreciate the effort, but you no, know, could be something for those for those people who like rom coms, man. Go check that out, man. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. The idea of you. That's what's up, man. Um, for my what we watching, man. I had uh, checked out this documentary on HBO called The Truth versus Alex Jones, and it's the um, they document the trial between him and the parents of the um, victims of the Sandy Hook massacre. And uh, it pretty much just kind of like documents his whole career from where he started to how he got to where he was. And then, you know what I'm saying, he had that stint where he was um, pretty much telling everybody how Sandy Hook was uh, a hoax and how it was fake. And, you know what I'm saying, those kids didn't die and so on and so forth. And he was, you know, he was really, really dying on that hill. And, um, you know what I'm saying, they took him to court for it. And he had to, you know what I'm saying, really pay up, like, big, big time. So much so to where, yeah, like, I, I want to say, like, um, I didn't finish it all, but, like, I'm almost at the end of it. But so much so to where, like, he literally, like, he can't talk about Sandy Hook no more. He can't bring it up, any of that. Um, I think he lost his, uh, he lost his company. He might have got, like, banned from YouTube. Like, all kind of shit was going on with uh, Alex Jones. Which is, you know, it, it's a crazy situation because he was actually being warned to not talk about the shit, right? And mm -hmm. he just didn't listen. And uh, they got him. But definitely go check that out, man. Um, if you are one of those people who is into content creation, if you are one of those people who is into news and media and all that type of stuff, this is a great documentary to go watch and uh, get some insight from, for sure. Cool, cool. Yeah, that was a. Uh, he, he's a wild boy, man. He's a wild boy. Wild boy. <laughs> so, um, man, this episode is uh, this is a wild ass episode actually. This is about the Jinx. Uh, it's a documentary that came out in 2015 on HBO. Um, and it followed the uh life. Uh, make sure we say part one. Because we yeah, will be coming back for a part first two. season. Yeah, this is the first season. Um, but it followed the life of Robert Durst, who was the heir to um, a real estate empire. You know what I'm saying? The Durst family was uh, huge in New York with real estate. Uh, I believe that they owned, I think at the time they said like 60 to 
of the real estate in New York. So like Crazy. he was, yeah, he was up, up. You know what I'm saying? They family was up, up. Um, but one incident caused him to kind of spiral. Uh, and it was the disappearance uh, of his wife, which was in '82. Yeah, '82. Yeah, and then what ended up pretty much bringing everything to light was uh, he had. <laughs> He had dismembered his neighbor and uh, pretty much fucked up that whole situation. Um, this is actually the account of the world's dumbest criminal. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get that out of here. I'm sorry. Yes. This is a document, uh, I'm about to say a documentary, a documentary <laughs> about. The world's dumb as fucking like this. If 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 an idiot was like pictured in the definition, I mean like pictured in the dictionary, like this dude's face, he's the poster boy for idiot, dumbass. Uh, what what other word can we use? What other words <laughs> can we use for this fool, man? Uh, oh my goodness. So. Let's let's go ahead and get into it, man. Um, so basically, uh, we start off this uh, documentary with um, a open case, a cold case. Well, not a cold case. It's just an open case at the time. Open case where these people find some. I think it was a little boy, right? That found the the body. It was, it was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a teenager going fishing. Yep. So he finds a torso just floating up out the water now that shit is wild as fuck off rip so i'm sure he was like what the fuck am i looking at right now cause the police the police come down next thing you know other body parts start washing up and black uh trash bags yep and black trash bags first first mistake right there we gonna get there though i didn't that oh, that pissed me off anyway <laughs> So, um, so they they do the forensics on the body parts. They figure out that it was a man named Morris Black, who um, who pretty much was killed. They go, they figure out, they get his ID, they run DNA and all these other tests, um, and they get to asking questions. They find out that there's supposed to be a, a mute lady that lives across the across the way. Uh, that has this apartment and she has supposedly all of this money because she paid up for uh, a year in advance to have this apartment <laughs> and they figure out how much money she has and all this other shit and the next thing you know they look at the apartment they're like why the fuck is this bitch staying here like this none of this makes sense all of this is already fishy come to find out it's not a woman at all it's, it's a nigga with a. With a <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yo, this one was going around with a. This nigga, this nigga was was wearing disguises <laughs> everywhere, bro. This nigga was what's the nigga name in Mission Impossible? <laughs> um, uh. Uh, Ethan, um, uh, yeah, he was yeah. Ethan Hunt. This nigga, Ethan Hunt, this nigga yeah. Ethan Hunt. This is this is what Batman would do in real life. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this is the shit that Batman would do in real life. Bruce Wayne would be doing real shit like this in real life, bro. This nigga is a multi billionaire running around with fake masks on, trying to hide out from the fact that you know what I'm saying, niggas is looking for him for real. Um, and so, and so basically, um, <laughs> we figure out that this nigga has disguised himself as a mute woman so he can get this place. And when he gets the place, uh, he's supposed to be, I guess, like in, in hiding or whatever from, I don't even, at this point, I don't even remember what he was in hiding from. I want to well, say it was from. The situation with his his first wife, right? Well, he was never being looked for for that. That's the thing. He was just doing the shit 
Because they said that he was just going around with fake IDs and all types of shit just because. He wasn't on the run or hiding from anybody. Right. He he just had a fucking a fascination of just doing the shit for some odd reason. So I think it was just the fact of just not being I think it was just more of like to where nobody could really kind of figure out where he is. And maybe when it comes to family members and friends and things like that, I think he just didn't want anybody to necessarily know where he was. But I don't right. think he was running from anything. I think that he just wanted to just be anonymous out here to where it's just like, yo, we have no idea where, you know, my brother or my son or, you know, my uncle is. Like, We have no idea where he is because he just, you know, he got a resident here, but he's never there type of thing. So. I don't think he was necessarily running from anything at the time. Not I don't yet. Not running, but he was definitely hiding, bro, because and this is the only reason I say that, right? When we figure out what's going on about him possibly being um ha- him possibly had being the the culprit of murdering Morris Black. Um oh, well, well, but this is the thing though. This is the thing. He rented that apartment before he murdered Black. No, no, yeah, so, for sure. So he just that's what I'm saying. Like it was already some weirdo shit anyway. Well, that's that's what I'm about to get into. That's what I'm saying. So when we figure out that he's the culprit, right? Mm-hmm. They go into 1982 and what happens with his first wife. And they break that situation down. And this is why I say that he had to be in hiding, or he was just trying to stay off the radar because in that situation, remember, everything was being questioned, but he never got like brought in on nothing. He never got like put up on no charges or none of that. And he was saying that he had dropped her off at a train station. And they had no evidence of that. She just disappeared, yeah. basically. Yeah, and see, they, they never really did any follow-ups because I think they just felt like at the time, during that time period, you know, there's no c- cameras, there's, you know, really no proof of anything, no cell phones, they, nothing like that. They explained why they didn't do a follow-up, remember? she It was supposed that she called into... Yeah, the, her um, school saying that she was sick. Right, and she had diarrhea, so she wasn't going to make it that day. And so at the time, they was just like, I guess, all right, cool. So then when they went back to go ask like people that was in the program and stuff like that, they was like, yo, would you ever call out sick? Or they was like, call out sick. No, like nigga, you, you did anything you were supposed to do to, you know what I'm saying? Be in there. Like, even if you was sick, you just kind of fought through it. And then they brought the one person in. I was like, yeah, like, even if you were sick, you wouldn't call into your professor to tell them that, you know what I'm saying? Like this ain't work. This is school. You know what I'm saying? You just wouldn't show up. Well, okay, yeah, true, but that's, we, we're getting ahead of ourselves because that stuff that you just said, that's in part two. Well, the mm-hmm. couple of episodes that we've seen. So, right. let's, like, tell the people, like, so, basically, like you were saying, right, a body washed up. Mm-hmm. So, they fucking, you know, go out there to do the stuff, start going through the trash bags, body start to come, well, body pieces start to come up, all this type of shit, right? Mm-hmm. So they go, they uh they able to get the fingerprint off the guy, find out it's Morris Black, they find out where he stayed. Then they see that, you know, this lady that's supposed to be the neighbor, they're looking in the mm-hmm. house, they're like, yo, this don't look like a woman's apartment. Right. Like this shit is, you know what I'm saying, kind of weird and all this type of shit. In there, work boots, all kind of shit. Yeah, like just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, look like they was like, now it, they did say that this person supposedly travels a lot and not really there that much, all this type of shit. So what they ended up finding well, it wasn't even really that because they wasn't even on my man yet. Mm-hmm. How my man even got caught up was <laughs> my man go to a fucking supermarket, goes in there with the, he's all shaved, y'all. Everything shaved down to the eyebrows, <laughs> shaved up. <laughs> he goes into a store. Now this dude is a multi billionaire, but you know, obviously at the time nobody knows. But my man steals a hoagie, steals a hoagie, and ended up getting arrested for stealing a hoagie, right? For shoplifting. 
So then they get to talking to my man, and my dude ended up telling him, like, where they asked him, uh, where they said your bail is like twenty thousand dollars or some shit like that or something. My man says, no, no, no. So they ended up looking at his hands, seeing the scratches on his hands or whatever, and he ended up fessing up to some shit about him staying in that apartment and all this type stuff. And so then they got to ask him why you got these disguises, why did you rent this place out under a woman's name? Because they found a whole bunch of IDs and shit in there. So they mm -hmm. end up figuring out, like, you know, he was the one that did it or whatever. So they end up saying, okay, well, you got $2,000 uh, bond. And they said what struck them was they got an answer that they never heard before. My man says, they said, okay, your bond is going to be 200000 He says, I don't have it on me right now. And they're like, the fuck? <laughs> they're like, we ain't never heard nobody just say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got it, but I just don't have it on me. Mm -hmm. And then they start digging deeper into him and find out, yo, this motherfucker is a part of one of the richest families in fucking New York. Like, this dude, Robert Durst. They're like, that's who he is. And I was like, yo, like, so why the fuck did you steal a hoagie? Like, <laughs> like with a hundred grand on you though. With a hundred grand on you, you just steal it. And even when they asked him during the interview, they was like, Why did you do it? He was like, Yeah, you know, it's just basically I'm mean, I've been getting away with this, so why not? Type of thing. Like just what else I could get away with. Whoa, and that ended up criminal the, the dumbest because dude this never would have happened if he never would have stole the hoagie this the jinx would not even be a thing if he never stole the hoagie free chilling kicking it all he had to do was just buy a fucking sub sandwich yeah <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest criminal ever dude come on man like but we got to talk about it, though. Mm -hmm. That's the entitlement. Growing up in is the it family. Is entitlement or is it just straight, just dumbassery? I think it's both. I think I think it's also being entitled all of his life. Mm -hmm. Always getting what he wants. Never being held accountable Nigga, for anything. If you got, okay, I'm with you. I hear what you're saying. But it's certain things in entitlement that just don't work, right? Like, if you've been stealing sub sandwiches from the grocery <laughs> store, like that's not entitlement. That's just that's like a disconnect from just regular society. Like it, it don't it couldn't have been more than what four or five dollars. I mean, we talking about two thousand fifteen. That shit was probably like it three bucks, like two, two bucks. bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a hundred grand on you. You could have bought that some chips and a pop. <laughs> it not been hurting at all. I can see if it was like now, like now I get it. If you got a hundred grand on you, yeah, you could steal a hoagie because that motherfucker probably cost like ten bucks. I get it, but come on, bro, 2015, and you got a hundred grand on you in cash, nigga, never. See this, this is the, this is another thing too. Is this is a this is also a cultural disconnect as well, right? Because I feel okay. like. When when you are one of those people who come from money, you're not used to being like in everyday situations where you have to make like everyday decisions, right? You don't have to decide, hmm, am I gonna buy this sandwich or I'm, am I gonna get some gas, right? So yeah. there's really no need for you to steal that. Like you just pick that up just cause. Like you was just like, hmm, let me see. Like he said, like let me see if I can get away with this. But for what? Like, why in the world would you think that you could walk around this store with no eyebrows and nobody? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are we talking about, bro? I don't give a fuck if you got sunglasses on, a hat on, whatever. You don't have no eyebrows. You walk around this bitch looking like an alien. <laughs> you think nobody? <laughs> you picking up a sandwich and trying to take it? Yo. That is wild, man. That is so wild. But yeah, I can't get over that shit, man. And then, like, so so they in there, they interrogating this dude, right? Mm -hmm. And so my man is basically 
Well, but they interrogating him, but they ended up finding out once they realized who he was. They're like, yo, like, so we got this dude in here for, you know, in Gavinson, Texas, you know, we questioning this man about, you know, the dismemberment of Morris Black. We look deeper into him, kind of find out this dude got a missing wife. It's never been found since 1982. So they sitting there like, okay, so light bulb go off in the head, like, okay, this is two people that have encountered this guy that we don't know what happened to Kathy Durst, but at least she's been missing and there have been rewards out for this woman for years, for decades at this point. And so they're like, okay, there's there's something with this guy. Like, there's something strange about him. But this is what really threw me off. What really threw me off was, and this is also to go along with this whole thing of being the dumbest criminal, right? What's his name? Uh, uh, Robert Durst goes in there and basically admits that he chopped my dude up. But not only did he chop him up, just says the shit like, like it's everyday shit. Like it ain't nothing odd. Like he was just like, okay, so my dude is dead. So I kill him, right? So he's like, well, I'm looking at him. He was like, well, I'm a small guy. I can't pick him up and I can't just carry him outside. Yeah. And it's like. No, this is the thing. He never admitted to killing him. Remember, he said it was an accident but, because they got into a scuffle over the gun because he was they was trying to make it seem like Morris Black had found out who he was and that this motherfucker got a whole bunch of money. So he came over there with a gun. I know he came over there and saying he seen the gun and picked the gun up and pointed the gun at him, which is fucking crazy off rip. Because why do you just have a gun laying around in your house? Um, then, well, I mean, in Gavin, Texas. Nah, fam. Even even <laughs> still, like niggas, it ain't the wild west. You just don't got a six shooter waiting. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when you go outside, you wear it. This is modern day. <laughs> like, <laughs> they got guns for sure, but they it, it just you ain't got no gun on the nightstand like that. That's crazy. So they going through. He explaining how he was wrestling with them and the gun and all that. Then when they get to saying. The same shit he just said. He like, nah, I don't know what y'all talking about. I it was it ain't gonna nothing like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it ain't that none of that happened. I don't know what you mean. Then he say, well, I didn't kill him, but his body was laying there, and I didn't know how to get rid of the body. So shit, I just cut him up. No, and and, and then he's like, oh well, you know. Then I thought about maybe I would put him in this suitcase, and then I was like, well, I still no, would really no, be. Remember, he said he nah. He said. I'm gonna put him in plat. He said, I put him in trash bag, and then he said, when I had the torso in the suitcase, and then dude asked him, he was like, suitcase. He said, I thought you put everything in plastic bags. He said, no, the torso was in the suitcase. So he was he was perjuring himself the whole time on this motherfucker. I don't even understand how he got off on this shit. He was contradicting himself through and through on this. So then he, then they talked about how the one bag with the head in it. Had had um had been ripped and cut open because he was seeing how everything else was still floating. He thought the shit was just gonna wash out into the ocean or whatever, whatever weird ass idea he thought was going on. Which, no, 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 no. He thought that the shit was gonna go to the bottom of the water because remember the guy asked him, "You didn't think about, about the current." He was talking about the suitcase. Yeah, and he asked him about the current. He was like, I wasn't thinking about no damn current. He was just like, I just thought everything would go to the bottom. Because it was heavy. But he was he was initially talking about the suitcase. He was talking about the torso. Because remember, that's the one that washed up, and that's what they found. So when he was talking about that, he seen that the, the bags kept floating. So he cut the one. The, he ripped the one with the head open and then threw it in there. Because that was the main evidence. Right? So. Yeah. After that happened, they had um they had asked him or whatever, and then he explained, I didn't kill him. He, he he got murdered on accident, and then well he got killed on accident, and then 
I had to figure out a way to dispose of this body because I don't want anybody to know why I'm here. If I call the cops, they're going to know who I am. They're going to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? They're going to think something weird already. My name, I am who I am, so on and so forth. So already your plan is already fucked up. Because you could have just called the cops and said, hey, this guy broke into my house. This guy, you know what I'm saying? He was going crazy. He found out who, who I was. Some some was the money. I had to shoot him. That would have been a way better defense than we got into it. He accidentally got shot in the back of the head somehow. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I had to cut him up and, and dispose of his body. Like, once, once again, world's dumbest criminal. No, but then, then this is the crazy part. So, so my man, so my man is, you know, on trial or whatever. And so they're going into his history and they want to talk to people, you know what I'm saying, that are associated with him. So this, uh, this writer that happens to be his friend named Susan, um, Beerman or Bitterman or whatever. So she's out in, fucking California right now. So she's like working on like screenplays and all types of shit like that. She got a book out, all this type of shit, right? So she's been his friend since like a teenager or some shit. And she happens to have you know what I'm saying a mobster family from Las Vegas or whatever whatnot. But we can't get deep into that because that's in part two. So we'll get back to that. But so Robert calls her and was like, yo, the police are going to want to talk to you and all this type of shit. And I guess something must have clicked into his head. He was like, yo, I I, I, I think she might snitch. Like, I don't know if she's going to hold me down. Word. So my man fly out to California, goes to her house, fucking Mercy. shoots her in the back of the head. You know what I'm saying? Execution Mercy. style. But this is the wild part. My dude writes a letter to the police to go check the house. <laughs> Why? And then write the shit in your own handwriting to tell them to check the house. It just it just had an address. Just you know not all only, the shit. Not only did he write the letter for him, he wrote the letter about the cadaver. Yo. <laughs> Nigga, this is too we we are in 2015, bro. Yeah. Who the fuck is writing a letter and sending it to the police? Instead of just calling the police and saying, Hey, I think there's a dead body in the water. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. It just looks like a dead body in the water. It would have been more helpful if you would have found the goddamn body at this point. Yeah. And this is where you kind of be like. You see, and this is my thing, right? And and, and, and I'm not trying to change the, the subject of this podcast, but this is why I'm not like super impressed with somebody like Trump, right? People talk about, oh man, he's such, such a great businessman and, and all this type of shit. And it's like, okay, right? So his family, you know what I'm saying, got bread. He gets a small million dollar loan from his father and he gets Don't involved in real estate in fucking New York. It's like, yo, all you got to do is buy the right fucking buildings in one of the most popular fucking places on earth, fucking New York. He struck gold with just having real estate in the right fucking places and became a billionaire. What's even crazier is we find out later that these that this nigga didn't even find a good place in New York. He just found a place and renovated it. <laughs> And that's still, what I'm saying. It's like it still came up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm not that fucking impressed. Like you, you just happened. Your your family had money. The point that I'm making is Robert Durst's family is in real estate. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So they got bread, and I'm saying so. It doesn't mean that they are the smartest fucking people. It just means that you know what I'm saying. They just got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker is the dumbest motherfucker in the world. If you're being honest. So, so he goes and kill probably the person. Yo, I can't wait till we do part two. 
the person that's probably like one of his ride or die people. I honestly think I think Susan was gonna ride for him. I think she yeah, was. Man. I don't think Susan was gonna tell. We figured that out in season two. <laughs> that bitch yeah. the most loyal motherfucker he had. Yeah, and and I, I don't know what spooked him. I don't know why he thought that she was gonna flip on him, but Susan was ready to do a bid for this dude. Like Come you can just on, tell man. by, you know what I'm saying, when we get to part two, but like I'm like, yo, she was gonna rob. He, he, yo, he murdered her for no reason, yo. Motherfuckers don't have the awareness, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. Like for these, for this motherfucker to be doing the stuff that he was doing, right? There's a disconnect somewhere where this motherfucker has a very expansive disconnect, and I mean like so much so to where like he was living in a fantasy world or something. This ain't even insanity. This is just pure stupidity. <laughs> like you got all this fucking money you got all of these opportunities to do this thing so much bro the amount of money this nigga was giving away was crazy i'm talking about i can't wait to number two just so i can throw out these numbers because that's yeah. was sick for nothing he was just throwing money for nothing so then you get to this point to where you got these people that's riding with you that's fucking with you this is where you find out how grimy how low and how selfish and how just despicable people can be. Uh -huh. This nigga was in court and he was on he was on trial for the murder of Morris Black. He gets off, right? He's innocent, he's good, not guilty, whatever. One of the jurors becomes this nigga's friend. This nigga's wife becomes this nigga's assistant. All of that for some fucking money is crazy. Some people just don't have nothing, nothing to back them, bro. No kind of backbone or nothing. When it comes to money, bro, some people will do anything. This nigga clearly is on trial for chopping somebody up. He even admits that he chops this motherfucker up. That's the nigga you want to be friends with? Yeah, like he he literally says, like when he was going through the whole thing of you know of what he was gonna do with his body, he was like, oh, I just figured I'd go to a hardware store and buy this hacksaw. And, and they was like, yo, did you chop out the arms or the leg first? He's like, I don't remember. <laughs> you know, like you want to be friends with this guy? Okay, but another wild part was the fact that he so he gets off, right? So the people. Uh, what's the motherfucking name? Is it Andrew? The dude that's the director of this shit? Yeah, Andrew. He, you know, he comes to him and say he wants to interview him. Mm -hmm. And his lawyers tell him, don't do this shit. Oh. He's like, nah. You're talking, talking to the world's dumbest criminal. I'm <laughs> of course he's gonna the, do it. <laughs> Who think he's also coming off of getting off. So he's thinking, oh shit. Well, first of all, I'm pretty sure the whole double jeopardy shit probably came up where it's like, mm -hmm. you've already been found not guilty. Mm -hmm. So now his lawyers are telling him, don't do this shit. But he was like, nah, like, I talk, but I think he thinks, you know, when it's that dumb motherfucker who think they smart, you, you, you've been in those conversations where yeah, you, you're you, in a room. This is the equivalent of, this is the equivalent of when OJ got off and he wrote a book called, <laughs> if I <didn't. laughs> That's what this is the equivalent of. That's exactly what this is the equivalent of. Yeah, so my man think, oh, well, I can outsmart these people. Mm -hmm. And then plus, I got double jeopardy behind me. So mm -hmm. even if I do slip up to say some of the wrong shit, I've already been found not guilty. There's nothing they can do. Yeah, they can't do nothing about it. But this is where he fucked up at. <laughs> they brought up the Susan shit and his ex-wife shit. <laughs> so he's sitting there talking about all of this shit, right? And so he's they're asking him about the shit about his wife. You know what I'm saying? And they're talking to his mom. Well, not his mom, but her mom. And then the whole shit with his brother. That that's a wild ass shit. They asked him, yo, like what what like, first of all, Robert Durst, and I think his family kind of knew, like, anytime. Um, uh, y'all, this is this is for if we have any rich people listening to this podcast, anything like that, right? Anytime you're the oldest, 
and you are the person that's supposed to inherit all of everything. You know what I'm saying? Usually everything always goes to the oldest. When the oldest get jumped, it means something. <laughs> the family knew, yeah, we shouldn't leave this shit to Robert. I'm pretty sure they was all sitting in there like, y'all. That nigga right, let's... Been Lex fucking Luthor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga would have been Lex Luthor, bro. That nigga would have had New York turned upside down in that bitch, man. Hey, but they knew. They were like, y'all, we shouldn't leave this shit to Robert. We're going to give it to the little brother. So they give they, so the little brother is the one who's running shit. So in the interview, they asked him, yo, how long have, basically, how long you and your brother been beefing? He was like, uh, well, you know, there was one time when I was five years old. They were like, <laughs> <laughs> You've been mad at your brother since you were five. <laughs> Do not fuck with him. Yo, to the point where his little brother had to end up hiring security because he was fucking scared of Robert, thinking that Robert was gonna try to kill him. Absolutely. And now, now, granted, at this time, the Galveston shit hasn't happened yet. Right. But his brother still feared Robert. From, I think I think his brother privately. I think his brother knew he did something to his ass. They his all life. knew, man. Everybody they knew. knew. Nobody yeah, had they, listen. Nobody had no no question in their mind except for the people who probably didn't know him, right? Like the cops and all that shit, because that's they have to go through that. But if you was around this motherfucker, bro, and you knew this nigga, you knew he killed that woman. Come on, man. You knew he killed yeah. every goddamn body. If they said he did that shit, he did that shit. Yeah, that was crazy as fuck. Then my man Robert fucking walking through New York and shit, mm -hmm. trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? Walking in front of his brother's uh nice ass apartment and shit, and all this, and tries to go to the building. They try to talk, remember they try to talk to that black security guard guy, mm -hmm. and they brought up the name. He was like, "Oh yeah, I can't talk to y'all." Can't talk to y'all. Mm -hmm. Black man was smart. He was like, yo, y'all ain't getting me fired up about this bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying nothing. Y'all need to get out the property. So, but this is the crazy part. So, Robert ended up, when the camera, when they were done, like, following him and shit, he ended up going back to his brother's house. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Walked up the steps and then walked down. And so, then he ended up getting arrested because there was an order of protection. He was supposed to stay a certain amount of feet. Be there. You know what I'm saying? From his brother. So he get arrested for that shit. Yo, this motherfucker, yo, this dude got a rap sheet, yo. Yeah. How many people you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's all dumb crime. shit. For small petty crimes. <laughs> 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 this nigga got a whole goddamn list of shit, bro, for small petty crimes. Nothing crazy. He got off for murder. But small petty crimes, this nigga gets caught every time. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is crazy, bro. You could you could kill a nigga, chop him up, throw him away. You can go shoot some chick in the back of the head. You can make your wife disappear, but you can't steal a sandwich. How the fuck? Get this nigga out of here, man. What? I still want to know why he walked in that bitch with no eyebrows. <laughs> What made him think that nobody was going to notice that? Like, that's the first thing. <laughs> that's the first thing everybody's going to notice. Like, so, whoever you walk past, they're going to look at you like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga's face? Come on, bro. This nigga was Yo. walking around looking like fucking, uh... <laughs> Like fucking ET, you talking about <laughs> stealing sandwiches, man? Come on, man. Oh man, that's fucking crazy. Robert Durst, boy. But yeah, this dude ended up getting arrested, and though, so then they even asked his brother during a the deposition. They're like, "Yo, are you scared of him?" He's like, "Yeah." Fucking <laughs> like, me, I got an order of protection on that motherfucker. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm scared of this dude. So, like, I thought that whole New York part was super weird. You know what I'm saying? Him just walking around and they're filming his ass. But we gotta get to the we gotta get to the, the grand finale because I think we're gonna oh, be man. on this shit for a minute. Oh, so my dude, so Robert 
<laughs> so <laughs> they trying to wrap up the documentary and shit. They trying to finish. And so Robert's like, yeah, uh, you know, I'll be there and, you know, at time come, he don't show up. So they keep calling my dude like, what, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So he was like, yo, I'm in Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay. So then they end up calling him back and he's like, well, I'm in Amsterdam or some fucking shit. I forgot exactly where he said he was. Mm -hmm. So then well, he said he was in uh, Barcelona. He was like, I'm in Barcelona. So then they're like, yo, like, we can't even finish the documentary because, like, we can't force him to come in, but he keeps saying that he's in these different places. He's telling one person he's in Madrid, telling the other person in Barcelona, all this shit, right? So then, like, they're on the ropes with the documentary. They don't know what to do. Right. So then he finally, they finally get him to be able, uh, so they're still doing their investigation and all that type shit, end up going to go see, I forget, he was uh, uh, Susan's stepson. Mm -hmm. So he, so Robert sent him a letter because um, he was going through a, 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 a tote, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. end up finding this letter from Robert. And they was like, yo, this is strange because well, Robert sent Susan the letter. Since who's in the letter, and he, yeah, yeah and, the, and the grandson, not grandson, but the stepson went and got, you know what I'm saying, her, yeah. her stuff or whatever. Right. That's like, yo, that's weird. Beverly is spelled wrong, and this shit look exactly like, like the cadaver letter. The, yes, come on, man. So they no. end up taking it. Go ahead, go ahead, because I'm going to so tell, tell you what really pissed me off about that encounter for sure. So, so they end up getting that shit, right? So I can't remember exactly what happened, but Robert ended up saying, yo, I'll come and I'll do, you know what I'm saying, the interview that y'all want me to do. So they sitting there with Robert and my man is, you know, he's talking all the type of shit and they're showing him these pictures. So he's going over these pictures and he saw this one picture. Oh, I haven't seen this picture in a long time. Can I have this picture and all this type of shit? So he's like, yeah, you, oh, go, you can have no, it. No, no. I, know, I know where you at now. Hold on. Before you get to that point, before you get to okay. that point. Now, they, they were having a sit down interview with him, right? And in that sit down interview, they was like, yo, let's take a break. This is the first time this happened. So they like, let's take a break. So he's like, yeah, cool. Like, let's take a break. We good. So everybody gets up, walks off and do their thing. Oh, this no, 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 That's, uh, no. This one, this one part I was about to say is before that. It's before that. I know, I know where you're going. No, it's not because the part you talking about with the pictures and everything that's towards the end because that's where he goes to the bathroom. Oh, I thought you were talking. About, oh, okay, because no, no, I thought you was is, going to the bathroom. Yeah, okay, got gotcha. okay. This is when they in the in the room with the red curtains and all that shit. They okay. face to face. They sitting down. So everybody goes off. His mic is still hot. He Robert is the only one sitting there, and he's mumbling to himself, like, "Oh, I I did not kill her." I didn't kill her. I I did I didn't do it. And he like he basically like coaching himself to make yeah. it believable that so his lawyer is lawyer. hears it. He's <laughs> like, hey, 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 what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, hey, like you're hot. The mic is hot. <laughs> yeah, your mic is hot. Stop. Don't say nothing else. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he just he just going with it. He like, huh? What? What do you mean? He was like, your mic is still on. He like. Oh well, yeah, you know, I I was just going through it just to you know see how it sounds for the next question. No, nigga, you was trying to cut yourself. <laughs> stupid. We heard you. You're an idiot. But continue. That's that's the first time this happens. Now it, we can go. Yeah. So then they's like they show him the cadaver letter. He's like, yo, I didn't write this shit. So then they show him the letter that he wrote to Susan. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wrote that. So they're like, "Can you read it?" And so he reads it, and he says, <laughs> ah. "But he says, thank you." And he says, "Yo, like, uh, you know, such so and such." So he said he reads the address, and he says, "Beverly Hills, Beverly spelled wrong." You know, by the by that, right? Mm -hmm. So then they show him the cadaver letter, and what they do was they took the cadaver letter and the address from the letter that he sent to Susan. Mm. And they was like, they had it, like, one on top, one on bottom. And they're like, yo, which one did you write? He says, I don't know. 
So <laughs> no, this is this is what I talk about too. So this nigga says, "Can you point this out and tell me what it says?" He reads the first one with the cadaver. He says, "Beverly spelled wrong." <laughs> <laughs> And then when they saw the letter from Susan, he said it again. Beverly spelled wrong again. Yeah, motherfucker, you you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about, bro? You spelled that shit wrong on purpose, bro. We know. We get it. You tried to be cool. You tried to be slick like that would throw something off. No, man. And then he tried to point it out. Oh, they, they spelled wrong. That shit don't mean nothing. You wrote them both. It's your handwriting, bro. It's your handwriting. Exactly. So oh, then, man. so then this motherfucker um, is sitting there, and so like they're like basically like Andrew's like yo, this motherfucker did this shit like you know what I mean. So they like kind of like in the shit, and so he's about to get up. He's like yo, can I have this picture? Because he asked, could he have the picture earlier? And they was like yeah, you know you can have it. So my man say, can I use the restroom? They're like yeah. Oh, you ain't you ain't here to you ain't here to this. Before he got a better hit, motherfucker said, "You want a sandwich?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got that one off. I see. I heard that. Bro. I just start rolling. I said, "Bro, he's a sicko for that, bro." Hey, but he did say that he said, shit. You want to take a sandwich home? He said, "We got all these sandwiches. This is what we gonna do with them?" That shit was funny as fuck, bro. So then. My man goes to the restroom. Oh, goodness. And that same shit that you was talking about, I did not care. <laughs> you said, oh, you did it. <laughs> they, they, got like, you. they got you. <laughs> and then, no, no, no. And then he says, kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, he said, how did he say, what did you do? What did you do, Robert? He said, kill them all. <laughs> Hey man, that nigga is Yo, crazy. Crazy is fuck. It's like how many like yo. He might be the dumbest person in America. Might be. Yo, and this is why I say just because you are rich does not mean you are smart. Like, because this is stupidity. Like at his best, at, you know what I'm saying? Man, at his finest. This, I'm talking about a shining example. Because this man is stupid. Yeah. How can you two times, two times you sitting there with a hot mic and and you don't even you sitting there keep talking under your breath and shit, not realizing first of all, who does these type of thoughts out loud? Like, yeah, <laughs> you can do the shit yourself, in your head. Talking to yourself out of the blue, but no. Another thing too is I noticed that in that first in the in the first part of the interview where they're sitting down and they're having a discussion, and every time he asks him something about what he did and like he denied it, he he blinked real hard like that. And then like anytime he was telling the truth, he wouldn't blink. See, I you know I was I was looking at that and I did I couldn't understand. And I was trying to, uh, it's funny you bring that up because I was looking at him when he was doing it and I was seeing was, because some people just got like a, a, a twitch. You know, so there are some people who kind of do like, I've been around a person who do like that hard blink thing. Mm -hmm. and, I, 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 and, and I think it's not a nervous twitch. It's just a twitch. I think some people just got this twitch. See, I thought, I, was, was, I thought it was that too. I thought it was that too, but as I watch him through the throughout the show, he doesn't do it at any other time unless you're asking him or like unless he's talking about the stuff that he was doing. So when, whenever it got to the point of him killing somebody, that's what he was doing. He was doing it on the stand. No, and see, I was it's, it's funny, brother, though, because I was I was looking at that and I couldn't really decipher if it was just mm -hmm. kind of like a, a, a twitch thing. Or if it really determined on when he was lying or telling the truth, because I was doing the same thing. I was kind of yeah. looking at his answers and trying to see, like, oh, he's lying. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Oh, he's telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? So I was picking up on that as well. But like, 
ran, you know, Robert Durst, man, this dude, first of all, first class douchebag. Um, but this dude, I, 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 I like all I need is just a smidgen, just a smidge of your fucking luck. Like Word. this dude. <laughs> I don't understand. This dude's supposed to be in a country where we don't expedite right now. In you know what I'm saying? Until he dies. In America, chilling. <laughs> he could have like, been kicking back. Crazy. Nobody would have figured this nigga out. Nobody. And, and he ended up getting off. Now, don't get me wrong. He had, you know what I'm saying, when he got off for uh, 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 something black, with Morris Black, he got off of Morris Black. He did have, you know what I'm saying, a great team of lawyers, you know what I'm saying, who was able to put uh, some reasonable doubt in there and all this type of shit. Out he didn't even need them niggas. He just needed old dude on the jury. Well, this is true. And, but this is the only thing about that, which, well, you know what? We'll get more into that when we do part two. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I don't, man. Also, the whole the whole thing with his wife, my man is going through the interviews, just talking freely, like there's no issue. About yeah, you know, we we tussle, we grab each other, you know. So I threw her down, and you know, and I did this to her, and I did like just talking about it, like like it's not a problem that he's abusing his wife, right? And like he tried, and this is the thing that that was so crazy about it, but also. You're talking to people from that type of generation, and I spoke about this on a, a, a podcast early on, where you know Uncle Washington, because people got to understand, like, you know, when you know when he passed away, you know, saying so he was 69, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying a couple of years ago, so he's from a different generation. He would always mm-hmm. talk about like, yo, back then, he was like, it wasn't no such thing as domestic abuse. No, he was just like, yo, he was like, you know, you tell them like if the girl called the police. And just tell you, you know, walk down the street, cool off, come back home. Yeah. Like that was that was domestic right. violence back then. Not to leave bruises on it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he was talking about yeah. domestic abuse like it was nothing. Yeah. He's like, yo, I would admit to all the fucking times that I fucking hit her ass and threw her down on the ground and all this type of shit. But it was just I would too if it, if it was that or killing her. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if, hey. if it's a DV or a murder, I take the DV, brother. I mean, this this is true. This yeah, is true. But the statue of limitation is probably up too. So it's like it don't even matter if I tell you how much I beat her. No nah, respect. But I'm just saying, like, if if they gave me a choice, like if I ain't had no other choice, and it was like, look, you got to pick one, or you you gonna go down for a murder? Hey, nah, yeah, I hit her. I mean, yeah, but it was it was just a way. He would say it in like that same breath of like how he was talking about. Um, Morris Black, how he was chopping them up. Like he say this shit just in in casual conversation. Like it wasn't anything that he was like ashamed to talk about. Is what I'm saying. Like he would say this shit that 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 is like considered as a crime. He would just say it like it's nothing. Like oh, I just went and bought a hacksaw. You know, no no big deal. I just threw my wife to the ground. We would have these violent fights all the time. Like he would just say it. This is a millionaire. He don't I'm, even that type of shit. Don't even listen when they if a, if the police get called on them, the police is at usually asking them what can we do for you. You know what I'm saying? Like them niggas ain't never on the bad end, and and especially with his family being who his family was, them niggas probably got all kind of secrets in that family. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling how many bodies they don't buried in that motherfucker. Because, like, the way that he just walking around killing motherfuckers, that wasn't his first time doing no shit like that. Not even in 82, I don't think. I think he done killed niggas way before that. That's why I say I think that whole shit with his brother, I think it's more than... than yeah, There's a reason that nigga got a fucking restraining order on him. <clears throat> yeah. And I, honestly... The, the family dog or something. Honestly, dude, I think... When it's all said and done, I think he tried some shit on his brother, man. I think he tried some shit. Be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. 
Because he don't fuck with him at all. Like, yeah, at all. Like and then, even the family, which this was more in part two, but, like, all of them was talking like, yo, like, he's just a person that we just never talked about. Yeah, he like the motherfucker that once was. Yeah, like, they were just like, we don't talk about him, we don't talk about Kathy, like, it's mm -hmm. just, they were like, yo, like, you got this uncle, but, you know, <laughs> we just don't, because they brought the nephew on, they were like, but he was like, they never talked about him. Anytime he was brought up, they just kind of brushed it off, like mm -hmm. it was nothing. Mm -hmm. I think they all knew, I think, I'm with you, I think it's more than Kathy, I think this motherfucker did some other shit, you know what I'm saying, but also, I think it could be a little thing of, you know, like, uh, like it, I, th I saw it in some movie where like this kid like tried to put a pillow over his like uh, toddler brother's like head or whatever, mm -hmm. tried to kill that motherfucker. <laughs> I think yeah. he probably tried to do some shit like that to his well, he brother. He tried to choke him out or something. Yeah, he too serious, and he really was trying to get him up out of here. Yeah, and there's a reason why I'm telling you. Anybody, we need to look into this, man. We need to look into all of these billionaire families to see that the, the, the top son get jumped. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm, we gotta man. investigate. Yeah, we gotta investigate. Yeah, that's Why that's are you jumped, sir? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you get jumped by your little brother? Because this don't yeah. make sense. Like that's, nah, it that's make, it make it it makes a lot of sense, and I tell you, it, why it makes in Robert's sense. situation, yes. No, yeah, but just just with certain situations because. And I think in season two, they'll probably get into who he was as far as like the real estate part. Because maybe this nigga just wasn't focused. And it might not even be as deep as, you know what I'm saying? Like he was just a bad person. It just might have been on some shit to where like his brother actually followed the plan that, you know what I'm saying, the parents gave. And then they was like, yo, you seemed a lot more focused. You did what we asked you to do. So you, in turn, you know what I'm saying, get everything. Because usually when it comes to the older kids, me being the one, you know, being the older kid myself, like, we usually stray off on our own path. We don't, all that trying to follow what everybody trying to tell us, we ain't trying to do none of that shit. The younger sibling is usually the one that's like, yeah, I do it. Come on, let's go. And then next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? This nigga done graduated from Yale and, you know what I'm saying? He got seven degrees and, you know what I'm saying? He done been interning for the dad and the family for seven years and now it's time for him to finally step up and he find, he made his first three sales out of the shit. And the, the oldest is just like, man, I do this shit in my sleep. Don't worry about what this <laughs> nigga talk about. He driving Ferrari, sniffing cocaine. He had all the parties and shit. And they're like, this motherfucker is a, a loose cannon. We can't have him on here because we know what's going to happen. Why the little, you know what I'm saying, why the younger sibling is following all the rules. So by the time, you know what I'm saying, it's time to pass that shit down, they're not going to pass it to the loose cannon. They're going to give it to the structured motherfucker. Now the loose cannon in this case is looking at that motherfucker like, Oh, you got my money. Don't you worry. I'll come see you soon. <laughs> get this practice in so I can know exactly how to take your ass out. So, <clears throat> so basically, the moral of the story is at the end of the day, Robert Durst is my, one of the dumbest, richest people that we know, basically. Man, that motherfucker is for sure the dumbest, richest person that we know, that we've, that we've ever heard of. I've heard rich people doing some dumb shit, but this is by far the dumbest. That I've ever heard. This is ridiculous. You not Yo. only <laughs> you not only kill motherfuckers, but then you write the letters to the police. <laughs> and, know that you killed motherfuckers. and then you get caught by stealing a fucking sandwich from a store when you got the money on you to buy it. Yo, yeah. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. I cannot wait to do part two. Who is this nigga, man? Why like is he trying to be a rapper? Why does he just have a hundred grand on him? It's another question I need to be. Yo, yeah. Oh, that's part two. I can't even yo, him, I wanna get God, man. Cause see, this is the thing, people. Both of us because three parts are out. It's yeah. six parts. So three parts are out. So we both watched uh, three parts. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I want to get into it so bad, but I want to give a small preview, yo. Like, yo, this dude. This dude had um he was sitting there watching this shit when it was previewed, right? So it would come out like on Sundays or whatever. 
Jeez, so he's dude, watching this shit. <laughs> hilarious. I cannot wait to do part two, but because hey, yo, when this got, dude. When he got to that ending, when he part got to five. the last episode, that nigga <laughs> put that motherfucking phone on. Do not disturb. <laughs> Hey, he was like, don't call me, bro. I got to go. He was like, man, I Yo. didn't realize what I did. Yo, hilarious, oh, but I'm like, and then everybody was telling him, don't do this shit, dude. Just like, yeah, just be quiet. You know, and who, wonder- you know who you know who could learn from this documentary? Drake. That <laughs> man, don't do this, man. No, <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes just shut the fuck up, bro. Just shut up. Hey, but, but also another lesson to Drake is don't underestimate people. You know what I'm saying? He underestimated people. He underestimated yeah. the documentary. He stole the, he stole the sandwich from the grocery store. Bro. Yeah, for no reason. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? With all of this fucking money on him. And he, he tried to steal a sandwich just to see what he can get away with it. And I think Drake's problem Number one, he underestimated his opponent. But then at the same time, I think in his head, he feels that, oh, well, there's there's I'm I'm so great, it doesn't matter. And that's exactly what Robert Durst felt. Nigga, I'm so great, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. Watch me steal this sandwich out of here, even though I don't have no eyebrows and everybody looking at me funny. Me. <laughs> I'm rich. I got all this yeah, money. Yeah. He's like, I'm rich. I killed my wife in 1982. I chopped the man. Ain't, they oh. still don't know about that. They still think this bitch is just <laughs> left and moved out the country. They believe that phone call when I sent it in. Yeah. They don't think she's dead. And then he even said, he was like, he said, so what do you think about the wife? Shit, she might be dead. I mean, shit, I ain't seen her since. Come on, man. You could <laughs> Any nigga willing to cut off his eyebrows is a killer. I don't give a fuck what you talking yeah. about. He's a yeah. stone cold killer. Man, listen, bro. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. But part two, oh, oh man. man, it's about to go crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all know now. So the last episode is supposed to be out on May 25th. I don't know what day that falls on, but you know what I'm saying. When, so. Anytime after May 25th, part two is going to be coming. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait because Man. it is some wild shit. But Susan? Oh, yo. Goodness. We'll save it. We'll save it, though. We'll yeah, save we'll it. save it. But, oh, so, man. Is it is it really a need to go to a, a Fire Flames? Because this is not a really. This is a five for me. Not I'm really. Sorry. Not really. This not really. But, but this is the thing. For right now, for right now, I'm going to say a 4.5. Okay. Because I think. Part two got the potential. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Already. I've only seen three episodes already. Yeah, and I can feel that shit wild. can go to a five. Because, right. yo, just from what I've seen at this point, it's like, oh, my God. Why yeah. This this yeah, shit, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't think oh, it could sorry, get more remember. crazier. Sorry, I didn't think it could get crazier. Mm-hmm. But it got crazier, man. And it's like, yo. Yeah, for sure. And his wife, his wife crazy too. His wife, his second wife, his wife now, yeah, she wild. His, that's his third wife, ain't it? Is it third? Is it the third? I, I thought I it was the second. I don't, I don't know. At this point, I don't know what to believe from this man. But you talking about the Deborah lady? Yeah. Yeah, she wild. Yeah, she wild. When, when they brought up, when they brought up old girl, she was like, "Don't mention her name to me. I don't want to hear anything <laughs> about her." I'm like, "Hey, man." Yeah, it's going. It's yeah. getting crazy, bro. Yeah, I yeah. This nigga Robert Durst is a player, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, so. I I would agree with you there. Yeah, let's get into the coming soon, bro. All right. Coming soon to own on video and DVD. So the next episode, um, I know we were supposed to bring you guys Godzilla and Kong, the new empire, but we never got around to it. So that's going to be at a later date. The next episode is another documentary and it's called the truth about Jim. Um, and, uh, if you don't know anything about this documentary, it's pretty much about this young lady who believes that her, uh, grandfather may be, um, the Zodiac Killer. So, 
Uh, I know this is right up as does Lane. You know what I'm saying? This is something that he was going to be excited to see uh, once he found out, especially what it was about. So we're going to check that out. It's on Max. Y'all go check it out. Y'all go look it up. And uh, we'll be back with, you know what I'm saying, another episode for y'all. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so <clears throat> thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. Um, your support is always greatly appreciated. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, I just mixed all that up. If you enjoyed this episode, if you didn't enjoy this episode, if you too wanted to know why this nigga shaved his eyebrows, hit us up on <laughs> socials. Uh, at Viewer Nine Pod on Instagram and Twitter, VA Pod Watch Group on Facebook and uh, on YouTube. Uh, episodes are coming up soon. I promise. I'm getting to it. Got a lot going on. Um, but you can leave comments, of course, and then join us on Patreon, patreoncom slash Viewers Anonymous. We just got a new episode up there, so go check that out for sure. And um, last but not least, if you want to follow me, follow me on Twitter uh, at Scoots Bronson. And y'all can find me, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all can find me at S.Foster8 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, follow the podcast, 28 Minutes or Less. Um, the last episode is uh, episode 152, It's the glove don't fit, you must have quit. You know what I'm saying, with my guy scoops. Um, <clears throat> I do have something else coming, so uh, stay tuned. And uh, until the, that's all I got, though. I was about to. I was about to do the I was about to do the outro for the stuff for the 28 minutes. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um listen, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Um without you, there could be no us. And um until the next episode, like they say in Hollywood. That's a wrap. Cut. <laughs>